well, you've made it to the third video of Section 7. Remember, that we're still talking about chemical bonding. And in this video, we're going to be dealing with the ions of transition metals. Just real quick review. When you have an ion, the protons don't equal the electrons. If the number of protons is greater than the number of electrons, then the ion will have a positive charge, and we call that an cation. If the protons are less than the number of electrons, you have a negative charge, and that is an anion, and you have the ions of the representative elements. And remember, the representative elements are the tall columns, these two and these six, and the number of valence electrons is equal to the number of the column that the element is in, but we also have the transition elements, which are the elements in the D block. We're not going to worry about the F block. We need to know how to form ions with these elements, and it turns out that most of the transition elements or the transition metals can have more than one ionic state. Why? You just have to trust me on this one, but feel free to ask me in class. You cannot tell the ionic state from its position on the periodic table, unlike the representative elements. So you're going to need to be told what the ionic charge is. Now, all transition elements are metals. Metals can only form cations. So transition elements will only form cations. They will always be a positive ion. Uh, quick aside, because I don't know if they teach you this anymore in elementary school, we're going to be dealing with Roman numerals, and we only need to know eight of them. I is one, two I's is two, three I's is three, IV is four, V is five, VI is six, VII is seven, VIII is eight. And realistically, we'll go for down, we'll use one through five, but it's helpful to know all eight. Okay, back to the transition elements. You're going to be given for the transition elements the name of the element, which will be followed by a Roman numeral, and it turns out that the Roman numeral is equal to the ionic charge, and remember this ionic charge will always be positive. So let's take a look at an example, iron. We look on the periodic table, we find iron here, and so we know that it's a transition metal. Therefore, we cannot tell its ionic charge based upon its position on the table. There are two possible ions. There's iron, followed by the Roman numeral 3, which can sometimes be written like this. This means you would have a 3-plus ion, and you would pronounce this as the iron 3. But you could have iron, followed by the Roman numeral 2, which could be written by this which produces this ion, and you would say you have iron 2. And the iron 3 ion does not react chemically the same way as the iron 2 ion reacts. So they are two different chemicals. Another example is titanium, which if you look in your periodic table, you see is a transition element. And you could have this is equal to this, which produces this iron and you would say that you have titanium-2, whereas its other form is this form, which would be written this way, which gives you a 4-plus ion, and you pronounce this titanium-4, and some elements have more than two ionic states. So, what if you're given the symbol, in this case, copper, with a 1-plus charge? Copper is a transition element, so you would write the symbol as Cu followed by the Roman numeral 1, or write it out as copper 1. If it has a 2 plus charge, it'd be written out this way as a symbol, and this way as a full word. We just simply say you have the copper ion, I'm going to ask you which one. I don't know, because I know there's more than two possibilities. That's all there really is. So now we can go to examples that you can do. So do me a favor and write out the symbol for cobalt 2. And the correct answer is CO2+. How about gold 3? And you should have AU3+. Let's work backwards here. You've got CO3+. What is the name or the symbol? And you would say you have cobalt 3 or CO, parentheses, the Roman numeral 3. How about this ion? And the correct answer is the barium ion. 
Once again, trick question. Barium is not a transition element, so it never uses a Roman numeral. Now, there are some exceptions to the rules. Silver, always one plus. So you say you have the silver ion or the Ag ion, or you could write it as Ag one plus. You never write it as silver with Roman numeral one or Ag Roman numeral one. Zinc is always two plus. So it's the zinc ion or the Zn ion or Zn two plus. You don't need to write it in this form. The third and final exception to the transition metal rules for the transition metals is cadmium, it's always two plus, so it's the cadmium ion or CD ion or CD two plus. You don't need the Roman numerals. But just to make life difficult, there is an exception to the rules regarding the representative elements. Tin and lead act like transition elements. You can have tin two, tin four, lead two, or lead four. And I recommend you put these exceptions onto your index card. Now, for the nonmetals, you don't have this problem. Nonmetals only form anions. Any anion can only have one ionic state. Therefore, there's only one possible charge for any nonmetal, and you don't have to worry about Roman numerals. For review, we're going to use a flow chart for determining how to write the ion and also how to name it. So you have an ion, an atom with a charge. It's either going to be charged negatively or positively. If it's negatively charged, all you have to do is change the suffix to IDE. And remember, this will definitely be a nonmetal. So fluorine becomes fluoride, sulfur becomes sulfide, so on and so forth. If you have an ion with a positive charge, a cation, you need to ask, is the metal from the representative elements? Only two possible answers, yes and no. If the answer is yes, you then have to say, is the element tin or lead? Only two possible answers, yes and no. If the answer is yes, you have to use the Roman numeral, tin 2, tin 4, lead 2, lead 4. If the answer is no, you do not need to use the Roman numeral. If the metal is not a representative element, you now need to ask, is it silver, zinc, or cadmium? Two possible answers, yes no. The answer is yes. You do not need to use the Roman numeral. If the answer is no, then you need to use the Roman numeral. Once you are used to it, it's not very difficult, but initially you will have to use the steps. And it actually used to be worse. And if you're interested in that, feel free to come talk to me during class. I love to expound on this. So now you know how to name any monoatomic ion, ions made up out of one atom. In the next video, we're going to begin to combine ions in order to make new chemicals.